but once you clean it up, you end up with a much sharper model. Hello everyone! Hello and welcome back to the second installment, installment? Episode, episode part, part. What are we doing? Thing. We're building a Hasegawa 124 scale. Lancia. Lancia. Stratos. Stratos Strad Stradale. Stradale. Stradale? Yep. Here With a go. resin figure. So, and what have we done so far, Beach? So here's the dun, body dun, dun, dun. that we've been working on. Okay, so we've, we have we sanded in the first episode. So I showed you how to do that, get rid of the mold lines. And the then, paint's a bit patchy. The paint's patchy, I'm and we'll, we'll have a closer look at that in a moment, because I specifically did it like that. Did you? Yeah. Okay, so there's no primer being used, we just use the straight paint that we're going to be finishing with, mm -hmm. and we're using that to act as a primer. Yep. So in a way, it's, it's helping it stick, and we put it on such fine coats, and that's why it looks a little bit pink and patchy, is because we just want to make sure that all the um, imperfections at the sanding spots uh, are fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over it, have a closer look. Any parts that need sanding, we'll give it a light sand again. Just over the paint. Yep. And then we'll start spraying again. So when you've got paint down, mm. we'll use finer grits of sandpaper. Yep. So something like anything over a thousand, two thousand be preferable. And then we'll end up with 10,000 before we put it on the next coat. Beautiful. And so we're going to do another thin coat again. Another thin coat? Yeah, so it'll be similar to this. How many coats are we going to have on this? It could be like four really thin coats. Wow. Yeah. We have to sand then, it every time. A little bit. Oh. You'll, you'll sand less and less as you go. Um, and then when you're happy with it, we're going to do a wet coat. So a wet coat is What's where... What's a wet coat? So the thin coats are like dusting it on. And a wet coat is when you spray enough on, and then you'll stop, and you'll look at how the paint settles on the surface. And when it settles and gives you a mirror finish, mm -hmm. it'll look pretty thick. That's basically a wet coat. So that's what we want to finish with. And once that's set, we can do a final polish of that and then put clear on it and it'll be like mirror finish. Mirror. That's what we want. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. So we've given this quite a bit of time to set. Well, it's, okay, been, nearly cured. Yep. it's been nearly a week. Yeah. It's been nearly a week. So there's absolutely no problem with sanding at the moment. I mean, if you're in a hurry, normally you'll be able to sand this in a few hours, depending on the weather. Or oh, really? If you're really? Yeah. If you're really worried, because it's a very thin coat, if you're really worried, you can hit it with a, a hairdryer to um, accelerate the uh, the curing time. But it's still not going to be hard, though, is it? It will be once it cools. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the important thing is if you do accelerate the, um, uh, the paint curing by heating, it needs to come back to uh, room temperature before it'll be hard. Could you put it in the fridge? You could. I wouldn't. <laughs> Why would you put this in the fridge? But you just, just call it just, down so you can sand it. Well, you can do. Put it in the freezer if you want to do that sort of thing. If you're so inclined, but yeah, just let it cool down. And then it'll be hard enough to sand. Because if you don't let it cool down, it'll just clog up all your sandpaper. Because when it's warm, it'll go soft. Okay? Last thing so I'm going to soft paint. That's right. I'm going to give this to you. So you're going to get some like 2000 grit or finer, like 4000 oh. grit. Look at this, God hands. Yep selection here yeah so before we go further let me just zoom in on this I'll let everyone see what I mean by it, it looks a bit patchy so not 120 120 is a bit rough 120 is a bit rough 120 is a bit like what I was using to thin down the plastic on the bonnet on my Mephisto fairly so you see how it's all patchy there and what you might notice here is this is you see that great reflection we're getting off the bonnet there that's a section of the plastic that we didn't actually touch and that's why I like spraying on raw plastic raw because, because it's been factory polished to a mirror finish already mm -hmm. and then over this side you see how you're not getting that same finish even though we sanded it down with 10,000 that's because there's micro scratches in there and that's what's going to be eventually covered up with the paint and it will get to this point okay so that's the aim anyway now what we want to look at is to make sure that the headlight covers are, are looking okay because we're concerned about the um, the panel line right so you'll have a closer look at that so the sides are looking okay. And then around the back, and we're just checking all the, the mold lines that are around the edges. So they're all been sanded really well. You're welcome. Yeah, good job. And then here you can see the micro scratches there too. But I mean, they'll eventually all get made a up. mess of that. Okay, so there you go. All right, so let's just zoom out again. So zoom, what we're going to do zoom, is it'll be zoom, easier zoom. if you work with this detached from the can. Oh, you can live it there. Whatever you prefer. I don't mind. You. I'm just learning, so I'm, yep. just, I'm just finding my own way. If you want to get super, super smooth finishes... I've got, I've got 4,000 here. Yep. You can use these wet. 
Now, if you use use them wet as wet sanding, you're going to get finer um, finish. But yep. at this stage, it's already so rough. I wouldn't really consider doing that um, until we get a few more coats down. So I'm not trying to take the paint off, just no. get rid of that the roughness. Yeah, so you don't need to put a lot of pressure down. Just basically like gliding the um, uh, the paper across the top. Yep. It's getting red. Yep. So you see how you're going back into the white? Yep, that's yep. what we want to see. Yep. Don't want to do too much of it, because then we'll need more paint to, to cover that up again. But that gives you an indication of how the plastic can, um, I guess it shrinks at certain points, right? Yep. And then that's just sanding away the high points. Yeah. Yeah. So that's looking good. So in the meantime, while you're doing that, I'm going to start and continue working on figurine. So I'll put her in a little Ziploc bag so we're going to lose all the bits. You haven't left that figurine alone since we started. How so? What are you trying to say? Well, this is, you're the figurine man. Oh, I like figurines. Alright, so what about the, I'm here. more excited for the chassis and the motor and Yeah, the well seats. we'll get into that as well. So what we'll do is um we'll get into I'm gonna put on my uh, Optrix 5 here. So we'll get into the chassis. So the chassis, most of the chassis on the bottom is gonna be the body colour as well. Mm -hmm. So we might as well spray it at the same time. There's some construction around the um, uh, the engine bay. So I can glue those before we um, we continue on. And so we could probably do that after you give that a, a quick sand. Okay. Yeah? You probably need some glue. So how about I get some glue first before we start? Glue? Yep. I'll just get the bottle from over here. Where have you been hiding it? It lives over here on this shelf, ready for any time. So that's the extra thin stuff. All right, so I'm going to continue working on the figure and scraping. Come I'm on. just going to work Where over here I? and just, just rubbing it. Just rubbing it? All right, so I'm just scraping away these lines here. What have you got? Don't go quiet on me. So I'm just scraping away here. It's sometimes hard to tell whether or not the, the actual mold line is part of the sculpting because there is a line that goes along the sides of the clothing. So that's what that is there, I think. So just make sure you don't scrape all that detail off. And again, this is something that will be more evident once we prime it. But of course, you're trying to clean as much of it off as you can before you start priming. So you're going to prime that that figurine? I will prime this and the How reason come? I like priming the figurine is because I want a matte finish on it so that I I'm can brush paint it, it well. Can. Yep, easy to handle, off the can? Yep. Yep. It was okay while it was over the lid but now that I'm just sort of finding it a bit easier I think to freehand it. Yep. So that, that's it, freehanding with a paintbrush. Definitely works better on a matte primed surface like on the figure. But we're doing it totally differently on the body because we want the smooth surface. And priming, we'll just incorporate another matte finish. Even if you use a semi-gloss primer, I think it definitely makes it easier if you spray directly on the plastic. Really? So primer is not absolutely necessary for all circumstances. Right, so it's a little bit of blooming here in the paintwork. On the side there? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that's happened because there's quite a bit of fine dust and there could have been a little bit of oil left on the body as well. So even though we did rub it down, we used alcohol, didn't we? Yep. Yep. So we could, have, we could have missed some bits. And that's where these really thin coats help too. And just like on a figure where the, the, the part that you really want to make sure is right is is the head and the face for the realism. Mm -hmm. On a car, the important part of that is to get the, the Juco really, really shiny. That's the first thing that everyone looks at. And that's the part that gives you the most, I don't know, I guess enjoyment looking at a car, unless you're trying to make a, like a rusted out I bomb. Like, I like the motor. You like a what, a motor? Motor. I like looking at the motor. Yeah. So this one doesn't have a lot of um, engine detail. It's probably a good thing, because if it had engine detail, it's going to take us much longer to, to complete. There's enough engine that you can see from the back, though. Did you call it a curb car or something, or...? Curbside. Curbside, what does that mean? So curbside means that it resembles a car that you see parked on the side of the road. Okay, so there's 
There's hardly any engine detail, none of the, the body panels open. And that's the, the term that's quite often used in modelling circles to describe a basic car kit. It's curbside. Curbside? Yep. As opposed to trackside? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Would, would that be a race car? Well, even race cars, like if it's got the full sponsorship decals and stuff all over it, if it doesn't have engine details or opening panels, it's still considered a curbside model. Mm -hmm. This is like a track paddock model, isn't it? Track paddock? Yeah. Okay, so some of these joins here, I'm going to need some putty, and I'll use putty next time around, so I'll just concentrate today still on the scraping. I'm just doing a bit of sanding. Just a bit of sanding? Is it therapeutic? Sanding? Well, I'm yep. scared, because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you do. You just want a smooth surface, yeah? It's really coming up like a guide coat, what I would call a guide coat. Yep. And that it's showing me all the low spots and, and high spots. Yeah, all those sort of imperfections, right? Because obviously where it's high, that's where it's rubbing through. Yeah. Back to the back to the white. Yep. And in the low spots is where it's remaining dark. Yep. So next coat should be all the more even. Well, that's right. That's right. And as we progress, it will get better and better. Okay, so I think the torso here is pretty good for what I can do with a knife, scraping it back. It's going to need um, a light coat of primer, and I'll find all the imperfections. We'll do some putty work, and then we'll continue. So we'll probably end up doing that a couple of times too, with a bit of primer. Now let's move on to this leg. So figures don't have a lot of parts, but you just have to be careful because anything organic in shape probably need a bit of slight re-sculpting to get it fitting right and looking right. Really? Yeah. What? That's the nature of it. And particularly this has been moulded in resin as well. So resin being much more of a a handcrafted method, there's always more imperfection. But once you clean it up, you end up with a much sharper model. All the undercuts and things that I was talking about. Now, this is a bit tricky because I don't know the design. So I'm going compare with this boot. Because we had some sprue hanging off this before. Just going to make sure we don't cut off all the details. Make sure we're looking at the right things. We well, don't cut off the straps or the shoelaces, do you? No, that's right. Well, the boots will fall off, wouldn't they? Well, you'll probably glue them, I imagine. They did the model. Yeah. Her shoes, would they be glued on? What, glued onto her legs? Yeah. Well, that'd be a bit painful. Like super glue on your fingers together. You've done that, haven't you? Yeah, that's okay. Is it? I like the burn. You like the burn? I like the burn. <laughs> well, you've done it. You've done it a pretty extreme way if you're getting burnt with a super glue. What do you mean? It's pretty full on. You get that little bit of smoke come up, that little bit of vapour, you know it's all gone wrong. Yeah, the electrical burn. Yeah, not electrical, chemical burn. Yeah. Yeah, you're a bit of a madman, aren't you? Right, so what's the front of this boot look like? I'm not saying it's deliberate. I wouldn't go that far. No? No. No. Alright, so these bits are all chopped off. How's your sanding going there? Yeah, it's I think right? it's going okay. I've gone back to a bit of 6000. 6000? Just to really try and get... The paint's actually quite soft compared to the plastic. The paint is? Yeah, it's actually quite easy to sand, much easier than I had anticipated. Well, I guess I guess it is very, very thin. I'm just trying to ascertain exactly where it needs to be sanded. Right. So I want to give uh, spray painting a go? We'll do exactly what I did in the first one. It'll just be a really, really thin, dusty coat. No, no, because you got the booth on your side. Right, you don't want to change sides. No. Why? No. You don't change sides. No? Is that a no-no? I've taught you. No. No? You can't do it like that. You'll upset the viewers. Will I? You have your side, oh, that's okay. it. You have the same side as Simon, so it's easy. Right, okay. 
That's you all right, I didn't know that. You are my left hand man. I didn't know I was going to change the balance of everything. Alright, so how are we going in? I don't know. You tell what me. What's that look like? I have to keep checking the screen because I, I keep moving away. From camera? Yep. Alright, so I need a bit of scrapage. Now a lot of this sort of figure sculpting is done 3D these days, but this particular one is still old school. Sculpted in, in clay, and then cast. How do you know? Because that's a specialty of this particular sculptor. Yeah? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I think you're making it up. No, I'm not making that bit up. I can make other things up, but not that bit. Alright, so I've got the back of the leg. This sort of demonstrates how much work's involved in a figure as well. In a way, it takes much more time cleaning a figure than it does to do a general plastic kit. I'm going to go some 10,000. You're going to go 10,000? Smooth it off? I'll try. Yep. Now, I was talking about wet sanding before, right? Mm -hmm. Now, my preference would normally be to wash the body between coats. But doing it on camera, I mean, that's a bit hard because then you have to wait for paint or oh, the water to, to dry before painting so well, you can well, hair dry it or heat gun yeah you could but I mean you still get bits that are going to be stuck in the um, the panel lines so just to make sure that we don't get any water left over we'll just do a dry and we'll just wipe it down like we did last time with a, a lint free um, cloth mm -hmm. tissue but if you're doing this at home a like, tack cloth yeah a tack cloth is that what you're saying yeah if I was doing this at home and I had the time, then I would be washing because uh, the water will get rid of all the fine dust. Do you think it gives you a better finished sanding? Uh, wet sanding? Yeah. Uh, well, later, for sure. And particularly if you're sanding for polishing, you really need to wet sand, otherwise you'll never get rid of the micro scratches. That's a little boot here. Alright, so that's meant to be all smooth. Just trimming off all these nubs. The last thing you want is an unwieldy nub. That's it. Especially when it's like on the boot and it looks huge. Doesn't look right. No? No. Right. Have you got a scriber for these panel lines? Is it now when we would do that, or we'll do that later? It would be now, but we can do it later as well. Preferably we'll do it early. Because you're going to do panel lines in this model, aren't you, didn't you yes, say? Yes, yes. Now, I haven't got any uh, real scribing tools here at the moment. We can use a knife. I'm really careful when we're going to open it up with the edge of a knife. I don't like it. Don't like the edge of the knife? I don't like the knife, no. It sort of distorts it. Does it? Yeah. Just saying. Because okay, we've here. got a little bit of a funky um, panel line on one of these headlight things, and we can see that we've had the knife in there before, and we've actually it's been scraped up a bit. It's been scraped up a bit. Right. Okay. What are you finding? We're here on the figure. Yeah. Well, it's got the obvious sort of rough bits and pieces. Which is cleaning alright. I mean, resin is quite easy to scrape back. It's a stiffer material than injection molded plastic. So you can scrape it and it'll keep a, a really nice sharp edge. Just cleaning up that panel line there. That's still good. Turn this off a bit. I think that looks okay. I'm really not going to really tell the rest until I get some primer on here. I'm really trying to concentrate on these micro stretches. Well, you're not going to get them all out. The paint's going to cover them up. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry too much about it. You're not going to get a full mirror finish on that. Just 
Because once we put on the wet coat, the wet coat's going to fill in quite a lot of it. I think you could be happy with that. You reckon it's good? I think so. Okay. Well, if it's all good, I'll get you to work on the um, the chassis bit then. You cut it out and and put the uh, I think so. engine braces in it, it. You might have to give it the, the final touches. Oh, was that the body? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll have a look at it. All right, so there's a leg. Let's see how this sort of fits. It looks alright, doesn't it? Who do you think the person is that measures sandpaper? The sandpaper measurer? Yeah. That makes it, no, nope, that's 10,000, no, nope, that's 8,000. Yeah. Is he a, a sandpaper measurer or a robot? Could you get an 8,500 special order? 8,500? Great. I've never tried it. It's probably possible, isn't it? I'm not sure. Is that what you're talking about? I think that would be my favourite. What, 8,500? Yeah. It's pretty specific, isn't it? I'm not sure, well, 8,000 is not enough. 9,000, I haven't seen yet. 9,000? What are you talking about? Great. Oh. You happy with that? Yeah, uh, not really, but I don't, know the, I don't know the desired finish. Yeah, that's right. It's not, I want it to be like, scratch free. Oh, it's not going to be totally scratch free because we've just scratched it. Yeah, but I want the scratches to be like, Polish. Oh well, they're not going to polish, and you don't want it. You don't really need it to be polished now. And I can't be sure about this bloomingness. What on the side? Yeah. Well, you don't have to take it all off. The paint will cover that as well. But there's definitely a high spot. You can just see here. Yep. What, the edge there? No, no, the the Oh, here. Yeah. yeah, it's alright. <coughs> I mean, if you're really, really, really pedantic, we could do putty work. But the idea of this particular tutorial is just to build it fairly quickly. Build it! That's it. And get a, get a decent What am finish. I doing now? Did you say I'm building something? Yep. So just check the manual here. Which, oh, I can't read Japanese. You have to well, help yeah. me. Just read the pictures. Read the pictures. That's it. What have we got? So you want to get to that... Um, Step one. Oh, Rear quite. frame assembly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah? Yeah. So what you want to do is... Do you want me to leave it on the sprue, off the sprue? <clears throat> so I want you to cut off this big massive bit here. Yep. Okay, because the bottom of that's going to be body colour. And then all these struts around the engine bay. I want you to cut all those off. And I want you to... Let's see. Natsuka. And probably cut off all these other bits too, because we're going to use those as a test fit. Test and fit. we might drop them in there dry, just to make sure all the other bits are aligned properly. Alright, so that's, that's that bit. Yep. G10. And, and pay attention here, there's a couple of little nubby bits that you don't need on this car, so we need those cut off as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Alright, so how about... Well, this so is going to take B. ages to scrape down, right? So we'll give B this some parts. No other B parts. All right, G. Where's right, the G? So let's put the figure over there. All right, let me check Yo, over G. here. What's up, G? Let's do a bit of a zoom so people can see what you're at. You're getting right in there. There's a Q parts tree. All right, so that's where we're at at the moment. Where we sanded it. This is a bit of blooming that we we had before that we're trying to get rid of. But paint's going to cover that up, I think. This is basically what it looks like at the moment. Alright, so I'm just going to go over this with some really fine sandpaper again. Just over absolutely everything. And then we'll give this another really smooth last coat. Okay, so what have we got here? What did you use before? 4,000? Did you use 6,000? 10,000. You used 10,000 before? 10,000. There's no 1,000, like 10,000. Okay, so let's have a look at this panel line bit. That's looking a bit rough, isn't it? little bit. I don't know what you did there. Made an absolute dog's breakfast of it. No, I don't know if I'm do much to that because I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. I think it just needs a nice scribe. No? G10. 
G10. Alright. G3. Let's try and fix this, eh? Was it 2000 being 2000? 2000, that's a bit rough, mate. What do we got? 4000? Got the sub chassis. Why do the nippers always try and take off the end of my finger? So why are you treating the nipper? Really? Yeah. Don't you support the piece on the other side and it comes through and gets the end of you? What do you mean? Oh, when you're poking the yeah the sharp bits in yeah. Actually, let's see any box here. What have we got down? What have we got here? 1200. 1200? Yeah, 1200's alright. You reckon? Yeah. God, I've got to get rid of some of this. I reckon you're a mad bit... butchery that I did on it. I reckon you're a bit cray cray. Who? 1200. Yeah, it's alright. Alright. So I'm cutting all these parts away. Yep. How are you going? So once you got them all off, I'm just we want to trim them a bit. I'm making sure they're all here. G5. There's actually a lot of little parts here. They're pretty chunky bits though, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not exactly needing... I might need to cut myself with a hobby knife though. Chop chop? Yeah. Alright, start by taking the nibs off the chassis. Alright, so it is looking alright, I think. I think we'll leave that. That panel line looks okay. This one probably needs a bit. Oh, you got the knife going there. As I try and slice my little finger off. Okay, I think it's all right. Let's go the rest of this with a little touch of six thousand. Hello. Hello. We gave it a crowd. We have. All right, that's good. How many times have you accidentally cut the nubs off of things that you've needed them? Oh, a few times. Yeah? Yep. That's where. How did you recover? Oh, you got to scratch build something, don't you? Why? Just a locating down. Yeah. So what do we hear? Does, that have, does this have a mirror that goes on the side of the door here? A mirror? <clears throat> yeah. So I've found these, this little round mark here. I don't know whether I need to sand it off or it needs to be there. So here I am going all over the thing with 6,000 grit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Doing a bit of dry fitting myself. How's it looking? I don't know. Oh, is everything sort of trimmed off? Yeah. Yeah. Just got to be careful what's a nub and what's a locating dowel. All right, so I think this is starting to look all right. All right, give this a bit of sand at the back end. Need a bit of quiet time, don't you, when doing these? Quiet time? What do you think? What music? What's your favourite music? My favourite music? Yeah. I like a bit of Halsey. A bit of Chopin. Chopin's a bit different than Halsey. Who's Halsey? Halsey? She's a singer. Yeah? Hey, you know Halsey. You know Halsey. I'm sure you do. Maybe you don't know her by name. 
What do you mean I know her by looking at her? That's right. I don't think I've ever met her. Don't you? Don't think so. No. She might be one of my followers. That wouldn't surprise me. No. I've probably met her on YouTube or something. What does she sing? Uh, a number of sing, songs. Sing it back to me. No, I can't. You're not going to break into a song? No. No. How does I don't it break into a song until... After your third... Until Saki? I'm... Third yeah, Saki something, down? Something like that. Better break down the inhibitions. Inhibitions? Yeah, there's not much of it, but got to break them down somewhat anyway. Smashing barriers. Smashing barriers. Smashing barriers <laughs> and glass ceilings. Glass ceilings? Is that right? Oh, I don't know. Could be. Is that what you get, in, get up to? No. No? Not your style? Ever since I watched Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory, I'm scared of glass elevators and that. I don't know where you went up. Elevators? No. Yeah. Is that right? Here you go. Alright, so rubbish down. I think we're pretty good to go. What are you go. finding? Now what? I'm passing you parts. Oh, you may be. It's one of my doing the bits. Yeah, you paint them. Am I? You, you fix it. Hang on, let's put this back here. Get this prepared for Because I another think coat. you're going to need some... You need your tack cloth. Alright, so it's back, back on. I need my tack cloth. Alright, so what have I got here? You want me to glue these bits on? Well, I don't know. You've got some bits that haven't been cleaned up that well. Oh. Yeah, let's get this. Don't get take the nub, Don't take the nubs off. They're not nubs. Well, these are nubs. They're, they're not needed. You sure? Yeah. That's where they're molded on. All right, so we just clean these up. That's why these sanding sticks are so good. You can get a really nice flat finish really quickly. I find four hundred for raw work my favourite. Yeah, I reckon it works pretty good, in general. Alright, so what have we got here? Is that a bit of the, the bottom of the engine? That's a sump. Sumpy That's bits? Safe. Sumpy bits? That's what I'm Alright, All right, so we've got some locating pins here, we've got to keep those on. We've got some nubs in the middle here, which we're going to sand off. You've got a really good technique. You'd be really good at doing nails. I reckon. Would you do mine? I would. We could do that on our 150th show. What's that? You could give me a pedicure. A pedicure? What do you think? I don't know about a pedicure. I'll give Why? you a manicure. Manicure? No, a pedicure. Not a pedicure. Really? I'm going to have to show your toes on. That's okay. Is it? That might be okay for you. <laughs> no? How are you finding it? Come on. Yeah, good. Good. Oh, what? You mean this or the pedicure idea? Nah, uh, we've already locked that in. That's locked in. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this is looking a bit rough, so I'm going to sand the whole lot down. Sometimes these mold lines on these bits too, they can look a bit ugly, so I'm going to sand them a lot. Really? Yep. Mold lines on here too? Yep. You're a madman. Alright, so it gives it a nice smooth finish. And I'm doing this really quick, right? This is real rough and ready. Well, we're going to build it. Yeah. We don't want people falling asleep unless they have to. No, that's right. So that's why this is sort of an express type build. I mean, over the years I've been building stuff, I've been developing different techniques for different uses of models. So there was a time when I was building a lot of models for exhibition display. You don't have a lot of time. Why? Because show might be on and you get all your samples maybe only a month before and then out of those samples you probably have to build all of them to be put on display now, this is like a trade show right and for example I'm talking about like Tamir so you find ways of building things to give a pretty good finish while being really quick and so this is where some of these techniques come from so grab this knife here so there's a bit of flash here I'm going to trim off is that? That's all flat. Is it? Yep. Trim all that off. You just be careful, don't cut your finger. I no, the first time. I don't want to have to call up your dad. What do you mean? You can carry me to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's scrape this down here. 
That'll do. Is it? Give this a bit of a scrape. That'll do. All right, so I reckon that's that's good to go. That one's I've sanded already. That's good to go. What else we got here? This looks all right. That's good to go. You read on that one. What have we got? All right, so what I'm going to get you to do is you're going to glue on. Can, can you dry assemble all this? Have you, have you cut off the nubby bits on the bottom of this yet? Oh, you have? Yeah. All right. Oh, you still got these bits here. What bits? These bits. These nubby bits. Oh, okay, okay. So let's trim that off. Because you want the sides to be flat. I'm trying and to get you some cleaning stuff. Any other big chunky bits here? Chop them off. So these bits here, that's actually um, sprue. We don't need that. At the front here? Yep. You sure? Well, you're off now, aren't they? You're reckless. Alright, so they're off. Alright, so let's give this a quick sand. And I'm going to get you to dry fit all those bits. And then if it all fits well, and it doesn't need adjustment, then I'm going to get you to glue on. But then how do we paint it? We're going to paint them all glued on. Are we? Yep. It's going but to look better. there's different colours. Well, the other colours, the lesser mm. colours are going to be brushed on later. Are we going to use a wet pellet? Yeah, we'll use a wet pellet. And you're going to make you've, you've never used a wet pellet before, have you? Can't we just open a hundred different cans of paint? Oh, you could, but I'm not going to. No? No. But you're going to mix up every colour as you go? Yeah, it's quicker. For oh, me it is anyway. An animal. But what if you have to repaint it? You can't. Repaint what? I don't know, something that you scratch. No, you can always cover up stuff with paint. Even if you're spray painting and you accidentally scratch a bit off your spray paint a bit, you can always spray a bit of can uh, colour onto a small cup and then brush paint it over. And it matches exactly. So don't have to worry about that bit. It's all good. You sure? Yeah. Alright, I think that's good. Alright, so I'll give you that. How do I glue? Hey? How do I use glue? So I dry fit this stuff first. <laughs> Getting straight to the glue, this guy. <laughs> he can't help himself, Why? can Alright, so these are all the bits. That glue so stinks. It does. Stinky glue. So is that for me? Yeah, and the bottle of IPA, don't drink okay. that. Right. Do not drink so that. these are all the bits, right? Dry fit all these. All right. Okay, but the bits that you're going to glue together are these bits that are going to be body colour. Okay, but we need the other bits in there just to make sure that they, they'll fit later when we we need to glue them in. Yeah? Yeah? Alright. Yeah? You're going to, start, going to trust you with that? No. Alright. Alright, so here's the body again. Probably won't be right. Alright, so this, I've got this... Uh, well, this is a special guide hang cloth, isn't it? But you can use any cloth as long as it doesn't have a lot of, I guess, bags and stuff on it. holes have to be opened up? Is that a thing? The what? It's holes. Do they could be? Does yeah. it need to draw them out? No. But it's got holes here, and we've got nubs, but it's sitting on top of the nubs. In that case, you probably need to open them up. So what? Is that what you do? It's just one one scenario. Or do you expect it to sit together? No, you see how they're, they're stepped? Mm -hmm. It's actually meant to be raised. Is it? Yeah. As long as you've got the little end locating in, we'll be right. Okay. Uh, and that's good. That's fine. Okay, so just leave it in there like that. We're not going to glue that in yet. But I want to. You want to? The other thing we're going to do with the dry fitting too is to make sure that the bits that we want to take off and not glue on, we can still access it later. So as long as... Yeah, that'll fit in, won't it? But how do you balance it all if it's not glued? Okay. We well, can use tape. Have got some masking tape here? You have to tape it. Ah, uh, just glue it. We're not going to glue everything. What are you talking about? I thought we were going to assemble it. We're just going to assemble the bits that are going to be body colour. The same as that. So oh. we'll paint those at the same time. But you see how we've got stuff in white and we've got black? Yeah. So this gives us a bit of a problem, right? Because the red's not going to cover that very well. So we're going to end up priming everything here, I think. Painting it white. Yep. Yeah? You I know what I mean? 
I think so. So what we can do too is when you're dry assembling, you can use just a small amount of glue to act like a tack. So just put a little dot tack there, a little, little there, and then see what it's like. Because if it does, if it's not correct, then you can always rip it off and it won't do too much damage. All right, so let's get a bit of I've got a bit of IPA here, but like I said earlier, you just use water and just wash it all down, let it dry naturally. But because we're doing this for the tutorial, we just want to speed it up a bit. So let's get a bit of IPA on here. That's IPA, yep, definitely smells like IPA. I'm just going to wipe it down, try and get rid of just a, a really fine dust that's hanging around. I'm going to do this really quick. And the advantage of IPA for us anyway is it dries very quickly. And you don't want to put IPA on here too long because it can eat into the paint. Can it? Yeah. But you can see there that it's gotten a little bit red. So that's the dust that was just sitting around on top. Well, that's exactly what we wanted, isn't it? Yeah. I think that'll do. That'll do. All right, so I've got this. Just to make sure that this is I'm not sticking too well now because we used this before. All right, so that's it there. All right, let's move some of these tools. Now I've got the paint. The paint has actually been in my pocket warming. Now we've talked about warm paint before too, haven't we? You like warm paint? Yep. I think you just like carrying yeah, it in your yeah. pocket. A little traveller. Yeah. Yeah. So there no? we go, we've got our paint there. It's, still, it's, it's, like, it's all, almost like a cat with a bell. I can hear you walking around. Ding ding. Yeah. Is that a can of paint in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? It's both. Is it? Yeah. Right, let's take this off. Alright, so I've got a spray booth here. Same spray booth we had set up last time. Let's bring it just into the frame a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Let's move this chair. This down. is testing my patience. Is it? How is it? Does it look like it fits? Well, it does fit, but it's all like falling apart as I'm assembling it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So do, do you like this. Look, we'll get the glue. So here's the glue. But are we supposed to be building it or not? Yeah, 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 to a point. So move it here so everyone can see. Mm. Now what I want to do here, look, we'll just tack here, right? So I'll put a drop here. Oh, whoops. You have to be careful, it's a bit delicate, mate. I spent hours building that. Did you? Sorry. Alright, so we'll do that, and we'll put a drop, just a small drop here. Just so it holds together. We're working with it. There you go. And then there's this front bit. It's a bit stinky. I thought you liked the smell of this stuff. I never said that. Why oh, didn't you? I never said I don't Maybe like I it. I just assumed that. I can't really see what I'm doing here. Well, it's because you took your goggles off. This one doesn't fit that well, eh? Is that what I'm experiencing here? You just have to manipulate because it's U-shaped. Oh, it's got a heap of flash on it. See that? Flash and... you got to scrape off all that flash. But where is it? Oh, the knife. There you go. That's going to help. I'll scrape off the flash and that'll fit in really well. Okay, so I've got this here. Let's do the sort of dusting coat that I did before. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to switch this on so it's going to make a little bit of noise. So while you're cleaning off that flash. How noisy? Can you hear that? It's a little bit of oh. fan noise. I wouldn't say it's offensive. No? Okay, so I'm going to, as you can see, I'm going to concentrate around the bottom edges again. And then around the top of the hard to get bits. And just thin coat. I just want to put on, on a little bit more paint than last time. I want to try and cover up this the white bits so I can get a better idea of what's covered. And you see that I'm, I'm going across. Mm -hmm. See some people that just get rah like this in one spot. Making noise. <laughs> rah! <laughs> no. Tiger! Okay. <laughs> Tiger painting. So you really want to start away from the model and then bring it across again and then finish your spray once you've gone past the model. If you don't do that, you'll just concentrate on certain areas and it'll just pull. And I think that's that's enough. Okay, looking, for the second coat. It's looking a lot more red now. It's looking better, right? Okay, so I can see there's little bits of dust that have traveled in here. It doesn't matter, we'll be able to, to sand those off and polish it later. You see how it's got this really wet look to it? Okay, Is that what so, you wanted? 
So this is not quite a wet coat. This is a damp this, coat. This is a medium coat, I guess, because this is a little bit heavier than the first dusting coat I put on it. But we've used that like a primer to guide us. Mm -hmm. This one's got a little bit more on it. And where we've um, sanded it, it's gone pretty shiny, okay? So it's gonna dull off a little bit as it dries, because so it's gonna shrink. And then we'll give it another sand or some really, really fine paper, maybe just 10,000. If we've got to get rid of the dust, we'll probably use it for something a bit a bit more, rub that back. And then we'll put on probably another couple of coats before the wet coat goes on, and that'll be perfect. I see it's starting to dry across the top here now, so that's starting to dull off a bit. But it's starting to look good. Okay, so I'm going to put this away somewhere where we're not going to touch it. Turn the fan off. That's a bit noisy. That's a bit noisy. Isn't it? Let's chuck this over here, eh? Alright, keep that in a safe, safe spot. Probably don't need this... This anymore. The spray the, booth. Are we going to paint some more stuff? Oh! Oh, did you oh just, we'll paint that, won't we? Did you just tear? What did you tear? Let's put that down there, that'll do. Did you break the doo-doo-doo? <laughs> no, doo-doo-doo is all good. Now we go with this. So you've still got this top bit, right? This top part here. Is so going this to go is here. all just like sliding together? Does it, it all fits okay? Uh, all this together? We, we're getting there. Okay, so this is going to go in here. Yeah, to put it on camera. That's oh, is that on camera? Gotta, oh, sorry. You've got to let the people at home experience this. Here we go. This. Okay, so let me move all this stuff out of the way. That's all. You might need your spectacles. My spectacles? Alright, so that this is a bit that you tacked that on before, did you? So I want to make sure that this fits in here, this fits in here. It's nearly done. Can't find the hole. Is there a hole there? There's holes there. There's definitely holes there, but you might have to clean this up a little bit. Oh, that's a bit chunky? Okay. I can't believe how much finishing there is yet and how precise it is at the same time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm only microns. Yeah, so you just got to be careful and make sure that this can get this all to fit. Mm-hmm. That's in. I think we should have built a um, 12 scale one. I think it's a little bit little. 12 scale? 12 scale is a bit big, don't you? Why? Can't see what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. All right, so that's in. Are you going to weld and it? That's got to... Go on top of that. Does it go on top? On top. Okay, so it's on top. On top. It looks all right, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're happy with that. I think so. You know, I wouldn't normally put these in there, but I think they're, they're fine, yeah? There's going to be issues with those. Okay, so we get our glue. Are you going to weld it together? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so how do you glue? So you can just go on, so on, just, on top. You just glue willy nilly. It's not willy nilly, it's controlled. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. But you're just gluing anywhere. No, these are the actual joints. Is it? Yep. Okay, so it's tacked together. So basically, you just want to look at it. So you want all the proportions right. You want to make sure everything's flat and sitting where it's meant to sit. That looks alright, doesn't it? Yeah, How's it going right. to handle? It's going to handle really well. Okay, so this bottom bit, we don't need that in there anymore. Take that off. Well, it feels like it's a bit tight, isn't it? Well, I think you put on a little bit too much glue there, but that's alright, let's come off. There we go. I glued that bit on. Oh, you glued it on? Oh, we want to paint that a different colour though. So we'll put it on later. Okay, so you got all that together. So I'm guessing this all goes together here, does it? Well, I put it as it goes together in there. So it's meant to be here, is it? Mm-hmm. Sort of like a little box. Yeah. Well, what we'll do is we'll let this set first before we do that, because we can build that as another sub-assembly, right? The bottom of the engine. Mm -hmm. But I'll get you to apply the rest of the glue to those join lines, So, because it's only tacked together, there's hardly any glue. And when you apply the glue, apply it on all the... the Parts that are mating together. Yeah. Yeah. So all the way around there, all the way along the bottom there, across the top. And will it, joints. will it will it be strong? Uh, it'll feel weak when it's wet because it'll soften everything. You're just gonna make sure you put it back down on a flat surface and just make sure it's all square. Yeah, yeah. But so where all the surfaces mate. Yep. 
That's it. And because it's so thin, it doesn't matter if you brush across the surface. Because when it dries and we paint over that surface, you're not going to see it. No? The paint will cover up all those glue marks. That's going to be super strong. Super strong? Super strong. I think it's going to need to be. Yeah. Definitely going to need to be. Yeah. So on the back and then on the front as well. So you get right in the back too? Yep. Just get the best, the best bond. So look at the manual. Is there anything else that's meant to be body color? I think that's it, isn't it? What about the, the headlight binnacle and stuff? Oh, let me have a look at this. And the me. bumper bars and... Well, the bumper bars are already on, aren't they? I reckon. So all these extra bits over here, whoops. This glue smells very chemically. Does it now? So these sort of skid plates and stuff, they're all black. So we don't have to worry about that. All right, so the body is obviously body color. There's no additional bumpers. No? I think we're right. I think that's pretty right, mate. I what happens if you put too much glue? Uh, well, you just let it sit. As long as it doesn't go into an area that you, you want it clean. Then can you scrape it off? No. Why? What does it do? Well, it's very thin, so it's not going to... There's nothing to scrape off the glue. The only residue there is where it's going to soften the plastic, and you can scrape back the plastic if it deforms the plastic. It will deform it, will it? Yeah, it can do. You apply too much of it. Alright, so there you go. I reckon you're pretty good there. Alright, so we've got a we've got a chassis. We've got a chassis? Yeah. Okay, so you're doing the top parts of the uh, the, the engine deck there. I was just doing so the parts last. Got the figure here. This leg looks like looks okay. I can't believe how intricate. How I've, never, it is. I've never used that sort of glue before. Is cement? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, it's much stronger. Is and, it? And I try to glue as many bits as possible while it's still raw plastic. Raw! Because when it's, when it's painted, it'll affect the paint that's on the surface. So usually to get a really strong bond, if we've got to glue it later, is you've got to scrape off the paint mm -hmm. from the glue point. And then you run, run the risk of damaging the paint you've just put on. That's right. So since we already glued that on, let's just just fit this and then we'll see if we're going to glue the sides on. This goes on here, doesn't it? So you're going to paint all this body colour? So yeah, so the whole chassis is going to be body colour. Let's see how the engine goes in. Are we going to paint it white first though? Yeah, so I've got some white primer. So we'll prime that. And that's probably the same primer I'm going to use for priming the figure as well. And then we're going to hand detail some of the engine points. Yes. Now, a trick to doing the engine, um, and given a really good depth, is we, we can paint it black, mm. and then we'll dry brush silver over it. Oh, dry brush silver? Yeah. Okay, so looking at this, so that's not actually a sub-assembly in one piece that I can tell. What is it? No. So they, they need to be kept separate. And we're going to glue those on later, because it's going to be attached to from the chassis there. Actually, I might be able to glue it. Touches on the side there, doesn't it? At mm -hmm. the back. Yep. Like a little box of chocolates. But if we do the box, the box will still fit in. It? Like a box of chocolates. What what movie is that from? I would just glue the whole lot in. No. Why? Because no. you want to be able to differentiate colours, otherwise it would yeah, be hard to get your brush in there. Will it? Yeah. That's it. That's the main reason for making sub assemblies. So you can get the paint in there properly. That's a bit tricky, isn't it? What's your favourite part about it so far? Favourite part? Yeah. Actually, the paint in the body has been my favourite part. Yeah, you like painting the body? Yeah. Alright, so we've got that bit in there. That sub assemblies. Now let's do the other side. So that's this way. Yep. Yeah. And it goes into the chassis. Alright, so we'll do this. Tamiya extra thin cement. 
Yep. Looks like it's been around a few years, this bottle. How many models would you get out of this? A lot. You need? A lot? Yeah. It all depends on how big the model is, of course. But you get a lot. I feel that we need more. Is there a way, if only there was a way to extend the bristles? There is a way. No. And we've got a YouTube video on that. Have we? Yeah. What, you do it? Yeah. There you go. Something doesn't feel right here. What are we doing wrong? Oh, that feels better. Doesn't look flat, does it? What's up wrong here? Here we go. That's better. Alright. So I think we're good. I'll apply more glue there. All goose? It's all goose. And more there. Okay, so we've got a little sub-assembly happening here now. A little box. That's going to be a little boxer engine. Yep. Sort of happy way. It's not going to come out now. What do you mean? Is that going to come out? Yeah, it'll come out. What have I done wrong yet? Done something wrong here. Do you want to put your glasses on so you can see? Yep. I think you need to good, have a look. Good mate. move. See? There you go. All right. So let's see what. Look, you are in here. there. Now, this is wrong because this is falling out of one. Out of whack. Did you fall off the pin? Yep. And this goes in here. Do you need some tweezers? Tweezers? This is like performing a surgery. Don't isn't think, it? Don't think I need tweezers. For some reason I can't get this in there. What am I looking at? Ah, oh, okay. There we go. Got it in a little locating tab? Yep. I think. Make sure... It's very... I can hear you concentrating. Can you hear me breathing? Yeah, I can hear you concentrating. <sighs> hey? I don't concentrate like that, do I? Yeah, a little bit. Alright, so that's in, that's in. I think that's good. You good? Yeah. I'm calling so I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to leave those engine bits in there for the moment until they set. Yes. And then they will just pop out and we'll be able to paint them separately. Now that whole frame on the back's going to... Be undercoated white? Yep. That's glued, mate. That's not going anywhere. No, it's not. Okay, so the interior is going to be a different you colour. You stand on that. We're just going to make sure that all this is all the same sort of white. So we'll prime the whole thing. We don't need to put much on the front, but we'll concentrate on the back to cover up that black. Mm -hmm. And then I think we're ready for priming. See this? See how that's just popping off? Yep. There you go. So there's a... Is it going to come out though? Yeah, it should do. I'm concerned that it's not going to come out. What? It's going to stay there forever. There it comes. There you go. Is it okay? That's okay. So, I well, don't squeeze it that way. It's only held from the side. Are you going to weld it up? I think that's good the way it is. Okay. So these these aren't actually touching. So they're going no. to be, they, they've got to have a little bit of a gap. Yep. Okay, those bits. And I think we'll leave it out there. So that's pretty Are much... Are we? Yep, that's part two. Okay. So it's still got a lot of bits here for the figure. That's going to take a while. I feel that we didn't get very much done today. Well, it's mainly you body know? work. Body work is a bit where you, you concentrate a lot on. But I think it's good. That's good? Yeah, I think we've got good progress. All right. Okay, so there we go. That cool. is the... Hasegawa. That is a Hasegawa Lancia Stratos. Stradale. Stradale. Yeah. That is episode two. Yep. Uh, and thank you for watching BJ and myself, Brett. We're from Hearns. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you in the next one.